What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to set up displacement mapping inside of your rendering so that you can simulate depth using your textures inside of D5 Render. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this for this video, we're just going to use a very simple set of planes that I brought in from SketchUp. It's just a very simple model that just has basically um, textures applied to flat planes. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the displacement option inside of D5 Render. And I didn't actually realize it had this option until they put out a video on it the other day, but I thought we could go ahead and take a look. And so what I wanted to do is let's start by focusing on one of these objects, right? So if we look at this, it's very flat, right? There's no like detail to it. It looks like you took a picture and slapped it on a flat surface. Well, what we can do is we can apply a displacement map to this in order to make this look more three-dimensional. So the way that works is I'm just gonna click on this face right here, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this on the custom for right now, just so we can look at what's in here. So when you first look at your material template in here, if you have it set to custom, if you scroll down, you're gonna notice there's no slot in here for a height map, which is what they're calling the displacement map. So in order to get the option for that, you wanna click on this little drop down. you wanna click on the button for displacement. And so when you click on the button for displacement and then scroll down, you're going to notice there's now a slot in here for height. So that's where you're going to load the displacement map that you get from wherever you download your texture files. So we're just going to click on the plus button right here, and it's going to ask you to find those mapping files. So I'm going to go find that map. And so in this case, this one came with a displacement map. So we're going to load that in this file. So when we load it, Notice how the way this looks on our surface looks completely different than it did before. So now, instead of it being flat, what it has is it has a bunch of ups and downs in it. And so if you click off of this right here, you can adjust how deep that effect is using this height slider right here. So you can see how if I drag it all the way to the right, I get a really deep look. If I drag it to the left, then it's a less pronounced effect. And so a question that's been asked is, is this actual displacement or is it using parallax? So parallax is basically, um, it's simulating displacement in here without actually moving the geometry around. Um, as far as I can tell, I think this is a parallax because um, this doesn't seem to be moving up and down with the edges of the geometry. So that's something that some people have an issue with. I personally don't, um, but there are some situations where that could be a little bit annoying just because you don't get the actual up and down around the edges. But um, it's still a quick, easy way to get this effect. And so let's take a look at another material. So let's say that we were to use this stone wall material right here. So we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to click on it. And then for this object, we're going to make sure that we've set it to displacement and we're going to go find that map. And so I'm going to go find that displacement map and bring it in and then take a look at this. So again, notice how you're gonna get a much more pronounced up and down of your stones on this wall. And see how you can use this to make this more or less pronounced using the slider right here. But this looks a whole lot better than it did when you didn't have this height map applied to it. And you can still come in here and apply the other maps as well. Um, I recommend that you do things like the normal maps, for example. So I would definitely want that because that's going to give you um, the kind of darks and lights around the recesses here. So you're going to want to load as many of the maps in here as you have to get like a true PBR workflow. But um, I wanted to focus specifically on the height maps. And so let's do one more over here with this brick wall right here. So we're going to select the brick wall. You're going to set it to displacement and then you're going to find that map right here and notice some places give you a more pronounced displacement than others so this one for example you probably don't want to crank it all the way up because that mortar starts looking really weird so this one's probably a little bit better for more of a minor effect than anything else but you can see how this still gives you that roughened wall and it looks even better when you couple it with the normal map associated with this. 
So kind of a quick video today, but this is something that can make all the difference when it comes to the realism of your renders. So it's definitely great to know that it's there. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the video, what you think about D5 render. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.